Maestro. 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 Dirty. Yes! Why? This is cool. Let it go. How about you hold it? Oh. There's a lady in the waiting room. She got legs in my forever. Hello and welcome to my dirty shorts. Okay. <laughs> What's your boy? I, 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 I. Look, I am going to lose a friendly relationship with an associate today. And I, I, I got a feeling it's going to come. I'm, and I'm even taking space when I say that because I don't know if coach feels the same way. So I'm making an assumption I probably shouldn't make. But I am tired of seeing half logic decides what people think are good coaches or players or anything. And I say that because I'm going to make this an educational thing because I got hot about it. I'm not going to lie to you. Not of the choice. You can make whatever choice you want to make. However, when you make your choice with reasons that are antipodal, for instance, you will say a person is a good coach because look at their record. And then you'll say another person is a good coach because of the players they have. And you don't put those two things together. Because why can't a coach with good players also have a good record, be recognized as a good coach? But then you say, but then they're not that good. A, they're not that good a coach because they have all those great players are supposed to have a good record. And that's the logic I'm talking about. That circular, that faulty circular logic. And if you wait for all my graduate students out there, if you want to call if you want to talk about the tautology of failure, we can do that, too. But I don't have time for that because my shorts will get too long. So here we go. Coach Dodge this entire season showed a versatility and a diversity in coaching that I'm just going to just quite out tell you was unmatched. I went back. I found three particular games. I'm going to I'm going to go against one of the choices that was one of the best games of the season. And that was the game of uh, the Rocky Mount uh, game that was called out. But I looked at three games that the originators had against teams with win with more than 20 wins which means they were solid teams and all three games are won in three different fashions. May 8th, the OGs over the beast of East seven, eight 56. They outshot and out played them by 20 points, not just in the score, but also in the percentages were shot mates, but that's not why I want to talk about it because when you watch that game, you saw how they handled selective push defense press, which means what they did was whether they scored or not, which they shot really well, they did score. They did a double three quarter press to slow down beast of the East and force the transition. They kept forcing beast of the East to one side or the other beast of the East. Once the ball moved to one side, they never got the ball back to the weak side or I should say they rarely got the ball back to the other side. Which shows me that they basically funneled Beast of the East into one corner and they were able to maintain that the entire game. And then even in their transition points, what did they do? No matter who led the transition. And this is what they did without dead balls. But they would reset the floor. They would reset the balance of the clock. They would go into their triangle or their two man or their offset heavy low defense where they get the threes that is something when you do that without stopping the ball that means that was coached in practice it was run in practice the players got the signals and the players executed that comes from the coaching another game where they beat well quite frankly let's talk about it when they beat the yacht club in the semis that particular game even though it went into overtime what did they do everything else was same across the board the ogs balanced off their resets by running different offenses nearly every time they went down the floor. Nothing was ever the same with a couple exceptions when they did clear out play for Cooper or someone else, but everything else was different, completely different. Almost every single time down the floor kept their maintained until what close into the fourth quarter and close to overtime when then they allowed what was working for them best. And that was Cooper flag on the clear out, being able to do what he was able to do to make it work. And then lastly, the game I've been wanting to talk about, and that's the OGs against the ill, May 28th. They kept the ill slowed up, and we know the ill has the athletes to move. What they did was they allowed them to move the ball. 
same thing. They did a selective funneling. One time they would push the ill to the left side of the court. Next time they would push the ill to the right side of the floor. They limited the back court movement by doing what? Front ball press, off ball press, which means I know the lane that you want to take. I'll just stand there. I'll be in your way. When you see more than one player do that, that is coming from the coach. That's coming from the technique. And the most interesting thing about that game at all, <laughs> my big boy, <laughs> Ilgowskis the Sexy led the game in assists. That's right. Your center led the game in assists, which means what? There was a concentrated plan to play inside out ball, and they did that. These games against teams with over 20 wins were done with a versatility and a diversity of play that I've not seen matched by anyone else. No offense this season. And yes, Coach had the talent to do it, but Coach also had the brains to put it in place. So I'm going to stop yelling. You let me know what you're looking for in a coach and what a coach is able to do. And that was just with how they handled the plays on the floor. I didn't even get anything else. So that's what I had to say. And you know what's up. I'll let your boy. Tell me what you think. What else you want to hear about? Yell at Maestro. Let me know how wrong I am, please. All right. Get back at you. And you know what's up. Never go outside with just one shoe. Oh, wait, do you want me to read? Thank you again for checking out the Maestro Sturdy Shorts. Drop a tag below and give us a piece of your mind. The Maestro Dirty. <laughs>